First, I'd like to thank everyone for joining uh, this major event. This is a major milestone for uh, Southeastern Regional Transit Authority's uh, new bus terminal. Sometime today, we're going to unveil the, um, the actual name of the building. A lot of you already know the, uh, the name, but this will be a ceremonial event. Before I get started, there's a, a few, few um, dignitaries in the house. Uh, City Councilor Dave Dennis is with us. And excuse me if I go out of order, but I have um, Senator Michael Rodericks is in the house. Selectman Gene Fox from Freetown. Representative Steve, Stephen Howitz. Councilor Ray Mitchell. And I think we have them all right now, unless we have any, any stragglers coming in. What I'd like to do is first start to give you a little historical uh, synopsis on how, how we got here. This project's been going on for several years. Uh, we st I was brought on in 2010. At that point in time, CERTA asked me to assist uh, the organization in getting this project underway. I took a look at the, uh, the actual plan um, that was initially planned for this project. The process that we had, we were going to knock this whole building down and we were going to start new. When I took a walk down into the basement, I couldn't believe my eyes. This basement, it was a parking lot. We, we could actually fit 20 plus vehicles in this building. My first thought was, please, let's not do this. Uh, we talked to numerous folks at CERT and said, we, we're, we can't do this. Parking is at a premium here in the city. Anybody who, if we can take any vehicles away from the city, we can actually do very good uh, in this location. Well, plans had just been started. Uh, I, I was asked to procure the owner's project manager. Uh, we'll, I'll, we'll introduce you who, uh, who that is at, the, uh, at some point in this uh, program. Uh, I was asked to procure the designer. We'll be bringing you, um, we'll introduce you to her name also. Uh, at that point, no one, no one, we, everyone just wanted to move forward. Uh, I was, it was, it was hard, hard to understand why we were moving forward, but we were moving forward. Uh, we opened up the, I was asked to put a demolition plan together. We, we opened up the bid, saw the prices and said, hey, listen, we could do better than this. Talk to the CERTA folks one more time with help from the OPM, uh, with help from the designer. Uh, lead, the leaders of CERTA made that decision. Uh, today, we, we're going to have a beautiful parking lot beneath this building. Where you're standing right now, the designer is going to give you a whole synopsis of what this building is going to look like. Leadership, it took the leadership to get to that point. Uh, the sort of management made that major decision. I'm gonna move forward and I'm gonna actually ask the leader of CERTA to come on up and say a few words, Mr. Eric Russo. Thank you, Al. Good morning and uh, welcome to our groundbreaking ceremony. I appreciate everybody being here with us. We have a wonderful panel of speakers here today, and uh, each of them are much more qualified to speak on economic development and what this building will mean to the city of Fall River and to our region than I am. Nearly everyone I see here today has played some role in getting this project moving forward, and I absolutely have to extend a great deal of thanks to our partners, the cities of Fall River and New Bedford, to MassDOT, and to the FTA, Without their support, we wouldn't be here right now. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for all, everything you've done for us, and especially the members of the SRTA team. We have Jane, Mandy, Amanda, Kristen, Mary Ellen, and Kara. And every day I'm reminded how fortunate I am to work with selfless, dedicated folks who only want to improve the transportation experience for all of our customers. I'd also like to take the opportunity right now to thank Al Oliveira. He's with the city of Fall River. And without his expertise and the extraordinary legwork that he has done to get us to this point, we wouldn't be here. If it hadn't been for Mayor Flanagan lending his expertise to us, 
I, I'm just, I'm certain we would have been a little bit lost in the dark. So thank you very much, Al. As the administrator, I've had a wonderful opportunity to work with extraordinary people across the state. And I'm really thrilled and honored and I could tell you endless stories about all that they've done to help me and help this project. But today, we honor and we remember a man who dedicated his life to the Southeastern Regional Transit Authority and to the communities that SRTA served. It is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce to you the wife of the late Louis D. Patine, Ms. Susan Patine. Most of you here today knew Louie, and those of you that didn't, I think you would have liked him. He was a people person. He enjoyed being with people, he cared about people, and he spent his life helping people, both locally and nationally. He was especially happy when he spent time with his family and friends, and to say that he would be thrilled by your presence today is a gross understatement. He would be proud and humbled by this tribute so on his behalf, I would like to thank Mayor Flanagan, the CERTA board chairman, Mayor Mitchell, and all the CERTA board members that voted to honor Louis' 23 years of service, of dedicated service to CERTA. I would be remiss if I didn't thank my family and friends for being here and for all your love and support. I am grateful to have you in my life. Um, Eric mentioned that this project has been a long time coming and actually, are you ready for this? It was initiated in 1994. And that means the director of CERTA, my husband, was working for 14 years to bring this project to fruition. It also means that I listened to him talk about it for 14 years. <laughs> it has taken four more years after his retirement to get to where we are standing today. So my children and I, my daughter Amy, my son Jeff, we look forward to the day when we can all stand in front of the Louis D. Patine Transportation Center. It does look good, doesn't it? At this time, I'm going, I'm going to introduce my boss, the Mayor of Fall River, Mayor Flanagan. I asked Mayor Flanagan, I said, Mayor, how would you like me to introduce you? He said, Al, you know me. <laughs> and he's right. Uh, one of the top mayors in the city of Fall River, the 45th mayor. This is a, let me begin by saying this is a great day for the city of Fall River. When I was first elected, I remember having a number of transitional meetings. And one of the first meetings I had uh, was with Serta, with Ken Fiola, and we we're talking about how we were going to move this project forward. And we brainstormed, we came together, and we were able to come up with a plan, a plan that would make a $5.2 million investment within our community. And I just want to begin by thanking Susan uh, for coming up here and sharing a few words with us. In determining the name we were going to associate with this project in our city, overwhelmingly we all agreed upon that it had to be the Louis D. Patine CERTA bus terminal. And with his career in public service, his dedication to transportation, I know we made the right choice. So Susan, thank you for being here, and your family and friends, thank you for being a part of this groundbreaking ceremony. And to all of the committee members, Arthur Frank, Ken Pacheco, Jill McLean, Ray Ledoux, Peg Anderson, Stephen Smith, Jay Patikas, you have been the guiding light in ensuring that this building, this center, this terminal uh, will be constructed on time and hopefully under budget. 
construction begins now and it will be completed around this time next year. And what will we have in our city? We'll have a $5.2 million investment. It will be a state-of-the-art smart building, approximately 8,000 square feet. And it's going to have all of the state-of-art technologies one would expect in a terminal being constructed for transportation. And if you came up 4th Street, you saw the temporary terminal. And I want to thank all of the shooter employees, the bus drivers, the assistants, for doing what they needed to do over these last three to four years to ensure quality service to the riders of our community. But we deserve better than that temporary terminal. And what we're breaking ground on here this afternoon is something better. And it's going to be more than just a bus terminal. You heard Al talk about the parking access we're going to have under this terminal, approximately 18,000 square feet of parking. There'll be a community center for citizens of our community to come together and meet in a space to discuss issues occurring within the city. There'll be a coffee shop and, and, and for people to come in and relax. And our community has made a commitment to transportation and we'll continue to make a commitment to economic development within the city. You know, I've been very fortunate to work with some great partners in government. Many of them are assembled here today. Last week we were able to break ground on the new Morton Middle School. Uh, a few months ago we were able to break ground on the UMass Biomanufacturing Center. And I've been collecting a lot of shovels lately and I see, <laughs> I see one I'm taking back to my office with me. And the reason why I like collecting shovels, I said it before and I'll say it again, it means jobs are being created. You see the construction going on. Uh, at this building, people are going back to work, and that's a great thing for our community. It's great to see our tradespeople back working again. And my favorite bird's becoming the crane. Uh, every time I see a crane in the city, I know work's getting done. And we'll continue to build, we'll continue to break ground on new projects, we'll continue to improve the quality of life for the people of our community. And to Mass DOT, to the FTA, I want to say thank you for being partners uh, with the city uh, on this endeavor. And hopefully this is just more to come of great transportation projects we have within our community. Thank you all, and I look forward to breaking ground today. God bless you. As we were working through the uh, procurement process, I, on a daily basis, I'd, I'd hear, Mayor, are we ready to go? Are, are we ready to go? Mayor, we're opening up bids at this point in time, okay, because we want to get this project going. So Mayor, Mayor's been trying to push this along as fast as possible. Uh, a few other people in the house, Kim Fiola, uh, Director of um, uh, Economic Development for the City of Fall River. He's, he's, I'd see him on the end of elevator and he'd say, Al, are we ready? Are we ready? Come on, we need to get some jobs going. Uh, so yes, we've been hearing it from all sides. The great, great group. Uh, how, how does it feel to have two mayors from, I would say, the best two cities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? Uh, my heart is in Massachusetts as well as in Fall River, uh, New Bedford as well as Fall River. Uh, the next person we're going to bring up, um, in January of this year, uh, New Bedford swore in its 38th mayor. I'm going to try to give you a little bio of, of Mayor uh, Mitchell because we, we know Mayor Flanagan in this location. Uh, we're going to get to know Mayor, mayor Mitchell now. Born in New Bedford, graduate of Harvard, attended George Washington University Law School, worked as a federal prosecutor for the United States Department of Justice, employed by the Massachusetts General Office of Prosecuting Public Corruption Cases. I'd like to introduce the Honorable Mayor John Mitchell. So uh, some people may look up here and say, well, this is a, a Fall River terminal on what's um, the mayor of New Bedford doing here. Uh, and if you ask my wife that question, she'd say, well, he's obviously going over to Sam's Bakery uh, at some point. This is just an excuse. 
And I, and I would confess that uh, before I leave the city limits, I will go to Sam's Bakery and uh, collect up uh, you know, a week's worth of uh, meat pies. But uh, the reason I'm really here is uh, because uh, I, I want to acknowledge um, and demonstrate by my, my presence here that, that regional transportation really matters. It matters to Fall River. It matters to New Bedford. It matters to the entire uh, South Coast. Um, it matters in a number of ways. It makes our economy go. Um, what we're trying to do here, uh, in part, is to make it easier for people to go from their homes to their employers. And when they can do that readily, um, uh, the cost of labor goes down for employers. Um, the cost of, of transportation, obviously, for uh, the employees goes down. It makes our economy much more fluid it greases the wheels in a way to our economy, our regional economy. That's a big thing. It also makes a big difference in our quality of life. And you have, especially among seniors, who rely heavily on public transportation to do the real basics uh, uh, day in and day out, things that, that many of us take for granted. Going to church, going to uh, the grocery store, visiting relatives, um, having a first-rate bus terminal in the middle of the city allows all these things to happen much more easily, much more cheaply, and raises the quality of life uh, for everyone. And so uh, it's important to recognize that th these effects, these benefits accrue not only immediately to, to Fall River, our sister city, but um, uh, region-wide. And I want uh, to uh, acknowledge, uh, I think Mayor Flanagan uh, and Al acknowledged a number of people here, but I, I want to just point out uh, three in particular, and that's First of all, starting with uh, Mayor Flanagan and Al and uh, their team in Fall River. Um, the, uh, the mayor's vision is the right one, in my view. Uh, it's to build a first-rate facility here in Fall River, the kind of transportation facility that this city deserves, and frankly, the whole region deserves. Um, and this will be a building that Fall River will be proud of, that Fall River will embrace, and that Fall River will make work to its utmost potential. And so I, I think uh, you know, your team uh, ought to be really commended for, for this. And you'll be able to look at this as part of your legacy uh, here working on behalf of the city of Fall River and something you'll be proud of uh, for a long time. Um, let me also acknowledge the leadership of uh, Eric Russo and his team uh, at CERTA. And by the way, it's just as a reminder, it's SRTA now. So uh, that's not CERTA. It's hard, those, hard, those old habits are hard to break. Uh, but Eric has jumped in, uh, frankly, to, uh, into uh, what was a difficult situation uh, at the authority uh, some months back and has been able uh, really to, uh, to steer the ship in the right direction. And part of that, um, uh, that effort is to rebrand uh, the authority, um, you know, which, is, which matters a lot. It's going to matter for the, the long run, in the long run to make our uh, transportation system go uh, in the region. Um, I joke about calling uh, the, the authority SRTA instead of CERTA, but that's, uh, it, it is true that we need people to come back, to want to revisit uh, busing and public transportation generally uh, in order for it to work for our economy and to raise our quality of life. And Eric has uh, devoted uh, his efforts and his team's efforts along those lines. So thank you, Eric, for, for doing that. Um, and then last, let me just, uh, let me just uh, congratulate uh, the Patine family and Susan in particular. Um, we, when we name public buildings, it's uh, it's a serious task, and uh, it's only people who are uh, who are lifelong public servants, public citizens in, in, a, in the broadest sense, uh, who are worthy of having their names on such important buildings in perpetuity. Uh, and Louis is one of those people. Um, you know, your husband devoted his his life not only to his family, but also to, uh, to the city and to this region. Uh, and we are, we sit here today as the beneficiaries of, of his efforts. And so uh, I want to congratulate you. This is something to be proud of. Your grandchildren and their grandchildren will be talking about this. And uh, uh, it's a great day for you, and it's well-deserved. So thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, for being here today. Before I bring up our next speaker, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, give a special thanks to the Construction Oversight Committee. Uh, Mayor Flanagan touched on, on the group uh, very briefly. What the Construction Oversight Group does, they meet once a month. Uh, we haven't started yet. We're going to have our first meeting very shortly. 
Uh, what this group will actually do is, is see where the money's going, witness what's, what, project, what the project's doing on a monthly basis. The group will be informed by the architect, by the owner's project manager, by myself. And I'd like to acknowledge this group uh, because they're a, a major uh, group in this project. They will actually know where the money's going and how the project's being built. Um, if you're in the house, just acknowledge or in the tent, uh, Attorney Arthur Frank. <laughs> the Director of Community Maintenance, he's, no, he's not here right now, he's on vacation. He's my direct boss, uh, Kenneth Pacheco. <laughs> Jill, Jill McLean. <laughs> She's in the Planning Department, City of Fall River. New Bedford. It's an idea. Sorry, man. R Ray Ledoux. Is Peg Anderson here? Nope. Peg Ed's not here. Mr. Stephen Smith. Sir Peg. And Jay Penagakis. At this point, I'm going to uh, introduce the Deputy Regional Administrator for FTA Region 1, Peter Butler. Good morning. On behalf of Mary Beth Mello, the Regional Administrator of the New England Office of the Federal Transit Administration, it's my pleasure to be here. Today is a great day. We're here not only to celebrate a reinvestment in transit, but a reinvestment in a community. These are the types of public investments we need in order to rebuild America and keep transit desirable and reliable. And it is very fitting that this facility is being named after Lupatine, a local champion for mass transit. And I'm very pleased that Kathy Lins from MassDOT is here. Whether, in, whether you are in Lowell or Littleton, Fitchburg or Fall River, you are seeing the result of the leadership of MBTA General Manager John Davis, Secretary Rich Davey, and their team at MassDOT. These are the types of projects that will bring more sustainable transportation choices to the region and allow commuters to keep more of their hard-earned paychecks in their pockets by spending less at the pump. Transit ridership is at near record levels across the country. It is essential that we continue to invest in modern transit facilities like this one, making it easier for hardworking families in communities like Fall River to get to work, to school, to medical appointments, and other destinations. This project certainly embodies the President's all of the above energy strategy to break the dependency on foreign oil, reduce congestion, and improve air quality. Guided by the vision and financial support of your congressional, state, and local political leadership, the City of Fall River, Massachusetts Department of Transportation, and the Southeastern Regional Transit Authority are continuing to improve the quality of life for Massachusetts residents by undertaking projects like this one. The federal government is proud to be investing over $4.8 million for this new transit center. And it is important to note that the Federal Recovery Act provided the necessary funds to get this project over the finish line. And when MassDOT Secretary Rich Davey talks about the need to address the backlog of state of good repair needs, He's talking about projects like this one. These aren't optional projects. These are must-do projects. Reinvestment in trans transportation infrastructure is critical to support mobility improvements and continued economic growth. We will not be able to win the future if we don't continue to support these types of legacy projects that will benefit current and future generations of mass transit riders. And in and in conclusion, I would like to acknowledge Mayor Flanagan, Mayor Mitchell, Ray Ledoux, Eric Russo, and the rest of the CERTA team
for their persistence in making this project a reality. Most importantly, the SRTA team should be congratulated not only for today's accomplishment, but on their daily accomplishments in the delivery of high quality public transit services. Thank you. All right, the list is dwindling down. Uh, we'd like to bring up the Kathy Lyons, the Chief of Staff, Regional Rail, representing John Davies. Hi, that was great, Pete, your speech. Um, I'm here today on behalf of MassDOT Secretary Rich Davey and Acting Rail and Transit Administrator Jonathan Davis. I'm pleased to be here with SRTA Administrator Eric Russo um, and our federal partners to celebrate the groundbreaking of the Lupatine Intermodal Center. MassDOT is proud to partner with SRTA, the FTA, and the City of Fall River um, for this exciting project and to develop this facility. This project will serve both SRTA and the region's private carrier bus Peter Pan, linking Fall River to other cities throughout the region. It will support economic development, provide better access to transit, and increase ridership opportunities. We thank Eric for his continued leadership at CERTA and look forward to continuing to work with, excuse me, with him and all of the RTAs across the Commonwealth um, to improve service delivery and to address the critical needs of the state of good repair. Thank you very much and congratulations. I'd like to acknowledge the construction team. Uh, we, went out, we went out for an RFQ and we hired the owner's project manager. Uh, we hired the architectural consulting group. They're located out of New Bedford. Pete Cazera is in. You can just raise your hand. There you go, Peter. At that point, we went out and we, we procured a, well, we put an RFQ out for the design services. We had a list of probably about 10 applicants. We hired Joanne Bentley, architects from Fall River. <laughs> Joanne Bentley. Joanne designed the building. We reviewed every single item uh, associated with the, with the building. We went out to bid. We, the bid was blown out of proportion. We went back. We did a little bit of scaling back. We opened up the bids a few months ago, and Mr. Al from Statewide Engineering Construction out of Fall River was hired as the low bidder. <laughs> At this point in time, I'm going to introduce Joanne Bentley from Joanne Bentley Architects. I've asked Joanne to give you a, just a quick brief view of her design and how she got to, the, uh, to this beautiful model and and design. Come on, Joanne. I know you want to talk. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm really delighted to be here today. This has been the culmination of probably three years of thinking about this project for myself. Actually, even before that, Lupatine visited me about five or six years ago and said, you got to help me. I've got to show somebody what this can look like so we can get this project moving. At the time, the building was about 2,400 square feet. It was a little tiny building, and as you can see today, not that it's this big, but we're going to be about 8,000 square feet, and we've got an 18,000 square foot parking garage. Um, I'm just absolutely delighted that you have faith in me and my design team. <laughs> I'm from Fall River, and I'm very proud. The front of the building, as you see it now, is going to disappear. And uh, if you take a peek in the building, you'll see a, a row of columns that cut the building right in half lengthways. That line of columns is going to become the new front facade of our building. And this area out here will become the pedestrian plaza with waiting areas. There will be um, some benches, bike, bike racks, uh, plantings, a uh, whole bunch of stuff. Um, we think it's going to be a, a really just a great idea for the city. Um, I, do you want me to show the model, Al, or what would you like? Okay. Um, Al can be my Vanna White and show you what we're doing over here. 
Um, the, the, basically, the idea of the building, thinking back to my old Fall River roots, the pictures that I have in my office of old Fall River, it's actually based on the old Fall River train station, um, which was just a long rectangular building. We've put a clear story at the top to allow natural light to come in here. We're doing as much as we can to keep a green building using green products when we build this. Um, so the front where the little buses are, that's the front wall of the building right now. There'll be able to be five buses that pull up to the station with waiting for three more. And um, the building's gonna be great. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, at this time, I believe we're going to get some shovels and we're going to have some helmets for, I'd like to call up Eric Russo, Mayor Flanagan, Mayor Mitchell, Peter Butler, Kathy Lyons, and Mrs. Team.